Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create elimination matrices, and we are going to further explore vectors. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so first up, we're going to talk about elimination matrices. And basically, when you multiply a matrix by the elimination matrix, you are going to get an identity matrix. And I'm going to show you a brand new way that's going to be considerably easier to create these guys. Also pay particular attention down here. I have once again information that is going to talk about exactly how we are going to multiply matrices. Now I know that I have covered this in the last video, but I want to really point this out again. My goal is for you to watch these videos and be so irritated by me covering the same information because you already know it that you know it and so I just want to reiterate exactly what we're trying to do here all right so whenever we are starting our multiplication we have x11 times w11 and x12 and w21 so what exactly we're doing here is we are taking this element right here and we're multiplying it times this element right here and then we're taking this element right here and multiplying it times this element right here and that is how we get our upper left hand corner value then how we get this value right here is once again we take this value we multiply it times this value right here and then we take this value right here and we multiply it times this value right here and then that process continues whenever we work down to the lower left hand corner we are going to take this value here multiply it times this value up here and then we're going to take this value right here and multiply it times this value right here and I think you can see we're working row to column row to column and again, row to column, row to column. And that is how we perform multiplication with matrices. But now back into actually creating an elimination matrix. Now, whenever we are converting to row echelon forms, we are creating an elimination matrix. And what I'm gonna do is walk you through the process of how we have created identity matrices before and then I'm going to show you how you can take those steps and turn them into an elimination matrix. So let's say we have 3, 6, 0, negative 2 and we are going to slowly turn it into an identity matrix. Well the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take row 1 and divide it by 3. Whenever we do that, our new form is going to be 1, 2, 0, and negative 2. After that, we're going to take negative 1 half times R2 to turn the lower left hand corner part of our matrix into a 0. And whenever we do that, we have 1, 2, 0, one and the next part is we are going to take negative two times r2 and add it to r1 and whenever we do this we are going to get our identity matrix all right now what we can do is just by looking at that we can create the matrix and how i will do that is i I'm going to say, all right, so what exactly is going on in our first operation? Well, we're dividing by a third. So I'm going to put one third up here. We don't care about changing this. We don't care about changing this. We don't care about changing this. And you can see that it is the rest of the identity matrix. Up next, what am I going to do? Well, I am going to be dividing by negative two or multiplying times negative one half, however you want to think about that. So let's just put that in there and negative one half and there we go. And then the final operation, what are we doing? Well, we're multiplying the times negative two across the first row. So again, identity matrix right here for the things that aren't changing and then negative two. 
All right, so we documented the changes that we want to make. Now all I need to do is multiply those matrices in reverse order, and I will get an elimination matrix. So I think I can get rid of this part. You should definitely be taking notes as I do all of this. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply in an opposite direction. So I'm going to take 1 and negative 2, 0, 1, times, again, our next matrix is 1, 0, 0, negative 1 half. And this is going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus negative 2. This is 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0. This is 1 times 0 plus negative 2 times negative 1 half. This is 0 times 0 plus 1 times negative 1 half. And this is going to give us our new matrix, which is going to be 1, 1, 0, and negative 1 half. All right, so now what I need to do is take that new matrix, let's put it down here, and you should absolutely be working through these with me, or pause the video and try to solve it on your own. And then I'm going to take the last remaining matrix C, 0, 0, 1, and whenever I multiply those through, and yes, I'm going to show you the calculations I'm making, I get 1 times 1 third plus 1 times 0, 0 times 1 third plus negative 1 half times 0, 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1, and 0 times 0 plus negative 1 half times 1, and this gives us our elimination matrix, which is 1 over 3, 1, 0, negative 1 half. And we can verify that this is actually an elimination matrix. I think I can delete this bottom row now. So this is the verification that this actually does turn this into an identity matrix. So we'll have 0, 1, negative 1 half times 3, 6, 0, negative 2. And whenever we perform this calculation, we get 1 third times 3 plus 1 times 0. 0 times 3 plus negative 1 half times 0. 1 third times 6 plus 1 times negative 2. 0 times 6 plus negative 1 half times negative 2. And if we perform all of these calculations, you can see we get 1, 0, 0, and 1. Exactly what we wanted. And that is how we create elimination matrices. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revisit vectors because we're going to be doing a lot more with them as this tutorial continues. Okay, so vectors can be thought of as one column or a one row matrix. So you can write a vector like this, which is the way that we have seen them in the past. You can also write them as a column vector. So like this, with a 4 and a 6 inside of that matrix. Or we can write them as a row vector with the 4 and 6 inside of there. Okay? You're also going to be able to use matrices to represent a set of row or column vectors. So let's go and create a matrix here. And let's say we just have 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, if we want to represent these as row vectors, we could have one of the row vectors be 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the next being 5, 6, 7, and 8. 
And we could also represent these as column vectors. And in that situation, it would be 1 and 5 and 2 and 6. And I think you're getting the point 3 and 7. And there you go. And of course, the next one would be 4 and 8. Now I want to talk more about graphing and how, what exactly is going on when we add vectors. Because I think there was a little bit of confusion when I covered this before. All right. So let's say we have a vector A and 3, 5. And we have vector B equal to negative 2 and 3. And we want to add them together. And so we can see what type of things change here whenever we're doing that, looking at this on a graph. So I'm first off going to come in and draw in A. So A is 3 and 5. So 1, 2, 3, and 5. So let's put a point right there. And let's draw in that vector. All right. Well, then to that, we are going to add in vector B. So that's going to be negative 2, so over 2, and up 3. And that puts our point right here. So just to reiterate, this is vector A right here. And this is vector B right here. So what is A plus B? Well, basically, A plus B is going to connect the terminal point of vector B to the tail of vector A. So we're going to go from this point up here down to here. And this is going to be vector A plus vector B. All right. And when I talk about the tail of the vector, that's where the vector starts. So for vector A here, that would be this point down here. And then the terminal point would be where the vector ends, wherever you see like the little arrowhead. And you can also see based off of what we did right here, that A plus B is going to be 1 and 8. And we can see if we add these together, 3 minus 2 is going to give us 1, and 5 plus 3 is going to give us 8. And no matter which direction we add our vectors, we are still going to get the same 1 and 8. But let's go and draw these because where vectors are going to look different. So here I'm going to add vector B plus vector A. So the first thing I'm going to do is get vector B. So that's negative 2 and 3. So that's going to be this point up here. And I can draw in that line. Then after that, I can draw in vector A, which is going to put me up here. So this is vector A. And this is vector B. And then after that, I go and fill in B plus A which is, again, taking me from this terminal point to the tail of B, which is right there. Draw in my arrowhead, and this would be B plus A. So you can see how those flipped. All right, so what goes on graph-wise whenever we are working with subtraction? This time I'm going to graph them both at the same time. So I'm going to have A minus vector B, and let's just work this out. That's going to be 3 plus 2 and 5 minus 3, which is going to be equal to 5 and 2. And you can see here that we're going to get different results based off of which way we subtract. This will be vector B minus vector A, which will be equal to negative 2 minus 3 and 3 minus 5 which is equal to negative 5 and negative 2. And now I'll go graph it. So let's graph A first. So what is A? 3 and 5. So our point's going to be right up here. And we're going to draw in that line with our arrowheads and mark this as vector A. And then I am going to come in and subtract. This will be negative vector B. So what does that mean? It's going to be to the right 2 and then down 3. So that's going to put me right here. Draw in that arrow. So this is negative vector B. And then what is going to be 
vector a minus b. Well, I go from the terminal point of negative b to the tail of a, right like that. We can draw our arrowhead in if we'd like. So this is going to be a minus vector b, which is going to be equal to 5 and 2. Whoops, actually, the arrowhead is not up here. In this situation, the arrowhead is going to be up here. Sorry about that. And there we go. And that's the 5 and 2 point. So how does it change whenever we subtract in the opposite order? Well, I'm going to use arrow um, B. So what is it? Negative 2 and 3, which is going to put the point right here. Draw in our arrow right like this. And this, of course, is going to be vector B. Then I'm going to draw in vector A, which is going to be negative A. So that's going to be negative 3 and down 5. So that's going to be right here. I can draw that in right like that. So this is going to represent negative vector A. And then I'm going to draw from the tail of B to the terminal point for A. So that's going to be from here to here. And that, of course, is going to be B minus vector A, which is going to end up being equal to negative 5 and negative 2. So there you go. More on vectors, a lot more in the next video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.